Well, hello there, everybody. Happy Friday. My name is Ashley Hunt. So good to see you guys. This is a cool one. I'm, I'm excited for this webinar talking about chat GPT. We got a lot of people in the chat, so welcome. For those of you that know me, it's great to see you again. Hello. For those of, that, of you that don't, welcome to Stormwind. My name is Ashley Hunt. I'm the Senior Project Management Instructor here. And we are going to talk about chat GPT. Now, you might be wondering, why are we looking at this and not at actually chat GPT? Because there's a couple things I want to talk about before we actually get into a demo. Do me a favor and chat in and thank you for all the hellos. And that's awesome. I love it. Keep it up. Because I like these to be interactive. I like to have conversations. It's not just, you know, presenting information and you guys sit there like, oh, how many of you are currently using chat GPT? Always good to learn more about a little, little brother. Yes, Skynet. Even from a PM perspective. But hello, hello. How many of you are using it? Barely, yes, not here, no, a little, not a lot. That's okay. Nope, nope. Yes, yes. Looking to implement in the next 60 days. Nice. Go Blue Jays. <laughs> Loving chat, GPT. You want to? Your spouse uses it more than you. That's okay. A little bit for not, but not for PMs. Yeah. Starting an assessment, a little, a lot, it rocks, not much. Look, we're all over the map here, yeah? You're testing a competitor, you're allowed. Use it to create my cover letter for my resume. Okay, see, that is awesome. Those are some of the things that we're going to be talking about. Yes, there are risks. I mean, how many of you look at your organization and think they wouldn't let me use it at work? Or I'm not allowed, I'm flat out not allowed been using it to generate generic policy and procedure. I love that, Marshall. <laughs> you gave yourself a great review. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't even think of that one. <laughs> I used it to talk to my boss. Yep. Government not allowed. Right. Don't know. I can only use it generically. We're in healthcare. Yeah. Reviews for your team. Healthcare system not allowed. First time hearing of it. Wow. Awesome. We're allowed to use it as a tool, not as an end all be all. And I, I think that's an excellent point, Lance, because ultimately uh, that's really what it is. It's, a, it's an assistant. I uh, doubt they let me use it. They're new to it still. Okay. Probably not then, I'm guessing. Yeah, I've been using it to make stuff for gaming, friendlier emails, creating generic messages. And the, Christy's asking, is there security concerns with it? We're going to talk about that because, yeah, anytime you put anything into the computer, right? You're using it to write a nature narration by a David Attenborough. I would love that. You have to send me a copy. Better than Google, Python, blocked at work, which makes me curious. Mm. There's a lot of reasons why. We'll talk about that. Is it going to take us over humans? You know, I don't know. How many of you got a little freaked out by iRobot with Will Smith? Use it to create a technical manual. Yes, Aaron. Besides boilerplate code, drafting emails, or the random odds and ends, Feels like having a personal assistant. That's exactly, Levi. That's how I want to look at this today. Yeah. The book was better than... Isn't it always, Marshall? Isn't the book always better than the movie? Family bots. Using it as an office assistant, drafting emails, documentation, saves so much time. Yeah, not worried about takeover. The way you test is too dumb. Right now it is. <laughs> Maybe now he would. I know that's for setting pricing and inventory management. Look... If you've never used it before, or you're looking at it like, wow, that's it, it's a little... Because we're going to talk about the risks. We, I, I mean, I'm risk averse. Those of you that know me, it's like, no, no, she, she won't even get... She won't even, you know, swim in the ocean. She's afraid to enter the food chain, right? So, but I dig technology, right? And if you're here, chances are you're either curious about it, already using it, and are like, well, we can't use it at work, but could I use it from home? Yeah, you could. So we're gonna talk about just uh, some basic capabilities. Look, I'm not gonna pretend to be the smartest person in the room. I don't know everything about everything, but I have used it, I have played around with it, I have generated some things for project management, some things for personal. I talked to my classes about it just to see what people are using it for. So because of you just chatted in all these cool things, everybody else can see those chats and go, hi, huh, I never thought about writing a review for myself. A good one at that. Never thought of that. You know, so there are things here. But I think really going into this with the frame of mind, and a lot of you also said this, 
that you have a digital assistant. You have the capability for free, or if you want to get, we'll, we'll talk about the different versions, but you have the capability of planning a birthday party, you know, those kinds of things, I, like a diet plan, or how many of you don't like to cook? Eh, I don't like to grocery shop. Could it create a grocery list? Could it put together a diet for me so that I don't have to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You love food. I do too. I still don't like to make it. I don't like to shop for it. So, you know, we're talking about project management, that kind of thing, but trying to stay ahead of the curve. Like it, love it, hate it, it's here, right? So these are gonna be the types of things that we can utilize to our best advantage and leave the rest. You have used it to write a diet plan. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> best point ever. Gonna use it to personally write a children's book for my niece, then use Mid Journey. Okay, so if you don't know what Mid Journey is, it is AI graphic generation based on prompts, which we'll also talk about Mid Journey. It's cool. Used it for a diet plan and workouts, used it to translate. So, I mean, the world is your oyster, right? But eh, when we talk about what is this thing, what is it actually? You know, the capabilities of chat GPT, generative pre-trained transformer. That's what it stands for, generated or generative pre-trained uh, transformer. So it's an AI language model. Now it's based on research and, you know, input from oh, sorts of data. It was trained on words, right? It's better than Google in some way, shape or form because it's going to give you instead of 80,000 pages of results, it might actually give you like the result that you're looking for. It just depends. You've got an awesome band and book recommendations. Yes, vacations. It can plan your vacation for you. You've used it for writing how-to tutorials for coworkers. Absolutely. And see, all of these things, it, it just, it's exciting, right? Don't you think it's cool? Chat GPT can assist with various tasks. If we look just at project management, and I've got a bunch of prompts in there, I'm going to show you sort of what I just threw in there um, over the past couple days to give you an idea as to how you could use it for project management. But look, if you walk out of this thing and you go, I've never seen it, never used it before, I'm in government, I'm not allowed to use it at my job, but wow, I had no idea I could do all these things from home. Project managers can enhance decision making. I mean, I don't know about you, but writing tons of templates, emails, you know, agendas for meetings, those types of things can be tedious and time consuming. Is it going to create your entire Gantt chart from scratch? Maybe not today. <laughs> Maybe in the future, but you can create a work breakdown structure. You can ask it to write some user stories. You can take a look at it and say, hey, can you rewrite this for me? It doesn't look good. You can use it to write code. Absolutely. One big concern is that if used in medical settings, the data goes up to the cloud. Yeah, we have to be very careful about personal information. And, and I think, you know, we talk about generics and we talk about input or risks to some of these things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are ways now where you can ask it to remove any data that you've put in there. Simply deleting a prompt, which we'll look at, doesn't get rid of what went up to the cloud, right? But there are they are putting things into place now because of those concerns of, you know, what if I put something in there by accident and I work for the government, I just, woo, proprietary secret just went out to the cloud. You know, what, what, oops. And so they are putting measures in place now to ask for data to be removed. And whether you trust that or not, I mean, that's, uh, you know, it is what it is. I get it. Absolutely. I'm not going to plug in my social security number, right? But when we look at how you might use an assistant in your personal world, are you going to give your assistant your social security number? Probably not. You're going to say, hey, could you draft an agenda for XYZ you know, meeting? Uh, I need it in 10, 15 minutes. Well, now you can have it in 30 seconds, right? I use ChatGPT to write a letter to staff to not put security information into... There you go. Good for you. That's awesome. Um, do me a favor and chat in. What, what are you... What types of projects... Like, What's your job title? Are you working on predictive projects, agile projects, hybrid projects? Because I recognize a lot of people from my classes in here. Interested to see what happens with Microsoft Copilot. There's going to be, they're building um, all sorts of like 
apps and connections to a lot of what we're using on a regular basis, even like Trello. Uh, director of IT, GRC security analyst. Yeah, maybe you're like, yeah, I don't think. Uh. Network engineer, ops, manager IT, 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 unified communications. Yeah, business systems, analyst and IT. I'm just a computer support. Yeah, you're not just a computer support specialist. We need you. Using it to streamline some tedious stuff. Yeah, data engineer. InfoSec admin, VP technology. Yeah, just a system trying to make the world a better place. You're a bureaucratist? There you go. We need you too, right? So if you, if you look at a lot of the different types of job titles coming in, you know, app developer, sysadmin, help desk support, there are things that can literally, I'm Batman too, Joshua. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? But uh, yeah, so there's a lot of different ways that we can use some of these things. So TG or geologist. So research, those types of things. IT technical assistant, you're a guru. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, when we look at how it can help project management, like on the predictive side, because I clicked that too quick, or I'll just blame it on chat GPT. But in predictive waterfall, you know, when we're trying to figure out what like predecessor or what are some of the things that <laughs> what are some of the things that we can use this for to help us execute our projects without adding too much information right so you could say and i'll, I'll show you what sort of one looks like and it, it, it's generic right the thing about prompting which we'll talk about is that we get better and better and it's almost like i have to remind myself that yeah it isn't a person but talk to it like it is and, and I say thank you just in case, you know, the robotic people are keeping track. Like, well, that person was rude. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. You know, so it's weird that way. But at the same time, it's kind of like chatting to an assistant who's virtual saying, hey, I need that agenda. <laughs> but, but not because of AI. No, I mean, on the agile side, I had to write some user stories. I mean, how many of you are doing agile? It can create Python and PowerShell scripts like nobody's business. Yeah, you can build a website. <laughs> no, I don't want to get on the bad side of AI. I'm super polite. Like, thank you so much for making my life easier, right? And I get it. You know, I, like I had to write a user story, but it was it was very generic. Agile does rule. Uh, it was very generic. Like, write a user story about a bad speller who needs spell check for their whatever. Yeah, and it kicked out more of an epic kicked out more of an like a bigger story but maybe good for brainstorming and so yeah you know <laughs> today we're going to talk about 3.5 which is the uh, free version if you decide you want to go to four you can do that it's a pay and I I have four I pay for it willingly pay for it but since most people in a lot of ways haven't used it haven't seen it and so on we're just going to stick with the free version but you can always upgrade if you choose to do so Let's talk about the risks. All right, so all of the data that was used to train ChatGPT uh, as of right now goes to 2021. So for example, I'm like, a, you know, when I teach PMP, so I was trying to figure out like, ooh, could it write practice exams and so on? And it was like the Project Management Body of Knowledge 6 edition, which as my PMPers know, it's no longer, right? It's not involved. So when we're looking at incorrect or misleading data or information, it can only go as it were trained, just like humans, right? If I'm trained in something and I only know that information, that's all I know until hmm, I'm, I learn more. You've been adding things like prompt uh, as you proceed. If you have any questions, please ask me. And then ChatGPT will ask and the end result is less general. It's all about the prompts. So we're going to talk about that for sure. And you get better at it. But even if it's super generic and you build on that, you'll see it gets better. I had it analyze a response that it gave me. And it said, well, that email could have done. You could have had been more empathetic in the email. I'm like, yeah, Chad, you, you could have been more empathetic. And it rewrote the email it wrote. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, these are some of the things. Now, there is this fear that a lot of detractors are saying there's going to be this over reliance on AI. And I get that. You know, we we hear about colleges and you know people it's passing the bar exam and all sorts of things. It's definitely a risk for sure. But if we treat it like an assistant, 
then it can help us. It can help. I mean, project management, you know, whatever position you happen to be in, there are tedious tasks that we do every single day that if we could knock those things out in 15 minutes. So one of the things that we talk about in the agile class is what's called cycle time. Cycle time is basically how long it takes to do something, but it's adding in non-valuable time. So if the meeting's an hour and you spend 15 minutes saying you're in my chair and where are the bagels and sorry, I'm on a phone call, your, your cycle time is an hour and 15 minutes, right? 15 minutes of that is non-valuable. I don't know if the meeting's valuable and you've heard me say this in class or you take it. Depends on the meeting. But the cycle time's an hour and 15 minutes. So if we can streamline our cycle time by having it do generic tasks or repetitive tasks and things like that, we've just freed up so much more time to focus on what it is that we're trying to do. And that's that's how I look at it, right? Miscommunication, it didn't get it. Yeah, <laughs> didn't get it. Incomplete or biased data. I've seen some of that, especially on, you know, different, can you rewrite, if I'm writing a fiction novel or something, can you rewrite that? And it's like, eh, you know, it doesn't spit it out exactly the way that I want it to. And that's okay. That's, that's a risk. It's up to we humans, right, to check themselves before they wreck themselves. But the inability to understand complex domain-specific knowledge, eh, I think it's getting better. I mean, those of you who are using it to write code, writing apps, writing websites, writing macros for Excel, you know, those types of things. But for real, that legal and ethical concerns like medical, government, proprietary information, and then lack of human time, like there's a lack of that and it's getting so much better. Four is a lot better than 3.5 in adding that human touch, but you have to tell it that. Hey, generate a super casual email to my team, inviting them to a team building event. It's going to feel more human than write an email to my team about a team building event. You know, so there are some of these things that we have to, you know, look at, tweak, adjust. It's all about the prompt engineering. Exactly, Glenn. And I'm going to show you a site. There's also a download that support's going to put into the chat. It's a Word doc. If you're worried about downloads, you can feel free to, you know, email me. I can copy and paste it into an email. However that works. Um, but the bottom line is that the engineering, I put the link to one of the sites that I'm going to show you because we want, we want to make sure that we're learning about it. And the only way to really do it is to practice. You passed your project plus. Oh, congratulations. That's not out of left field. I love that. Regularly review and verify AI generated information for accuracy and relevance. I think that's, you know, a big deal. You're welcome. It's a big deal because if we're not checking the work, you know, if we've got something that we're working on from 2022 and as of right now, it's only been trained to 2021, we want to make sure, mm, is there a bug in that? Is that going to affect? So we have to do our due diligence, right? So support, just put that in there for you if you're comfortable downloading it. If not, support will put in my email address. Many of you have it, but they'll put it in there. If you want to email me directly, I can just copy and paste the text into the email so that you have the information. I get it, right? Establishing data privacy and security protocols. I think that's one of the big things where organizations are like, no, 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 maybe putting into place whether ChatGPT writes it for you or not, you know, for sure. Uh, yeah, Brad, you're absolutely right. You can ask what it said was factual and it gives great feedback what it provided. Yeah, it, it knows thyself. <laughs> it's, it's crazy when you look at it, but... I think it's important as organizations or project managers or running PMOs or whatever position, like, hey, this isn't a free for all, even though it feels like a playground, this isn't a free for all. And we have to be very careful about what we put into AI because, yeah, it's stored somewhere. No, no, those are real people. Yeah. Shout out to my sport team, my real people, for sure. But training team members on the limitations I think it's important too, but also, you know, monitoring AI usage and project management. We do have to be careful. Legal, ethical, not yet. Is any software tools which could determine that the email document contract has been created by ChatGPT? You could copy and paste it into ChatGPT and ask if it was AI generated. I don't know what kind of answer you'd get. 
But yeah, I mean, you, you can. And I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if there are a ton of people right now, especially in the education sector, government sector, that kind of thing, who are developing their own AI to say, is this AI generated? Yep. Yes, you can actually ask it to cite references. Double check the references, though, because if it's an article, you can also, you could literally copy and paste a link of a, an extensive article and say, summarize this for me. Explain it like I'm a five-year-old and it will summarize. Like I had it summarize quantum physics for me, like a five-year-old and a 25-year-old. It's very different. Yeah. You were at a conference yesterday where the ethics and bias of AI was one of the time. I'm not surprised. Look, this is, this is exploding, right? And so it, it's moving faster than we are. And so it's one of those things where when we talk about, you know, how, how to use this while still protecting ourselves and our organization and that kind of thing, I think the best thing to do is to keep it as generic as possible. Yeah, because it's teaching itself. It's, it's learning faster. It claims to be, oh, cool. Thank you, Frank, for putting that in there. Because I'm learning too, guys. You, you have a lot of information. I've got a lot of it. Let's pool it, right? Let's pool it. But I think for brainstorming, meeting agendas, you know, process improvement, best practices, time management tips, menus, motivation and inspiration. I got one of those the other day. I'm like, keep it super casual and just, you know, give me some good feedback, right? Emails, quick reports, updates, those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, so I've asked it for to rewrite with no AI and it will rewrite it more like human. Mm-hmm. Yep, there are tools like Zero GPT that check if a document was written. If you take an output from GPT and throw it into another engine and ask it to rewrite it, it can circumvent measures. It's kind of like calculations in school where it's a cat and mouse game. And I think that probably accurately describes where we're all at right now. <laughs> like, I mean, I feel like that's, that's where we are. Also, like calculators, though, this can help us be better at our jobs. Absolutely. You could literally, I mean, you could ask it to write a VLOOKUP formula for Excel, which is always a nightmare. Nobody ever remembers it except for the one person in the office that rocks at Excel. It can do calculations. It can, you can say, hey, uh, my cost performance index is 0.8. Is that good or bad? And what can I do with it? You know, how can I fix it? What are some, some ways? And even if it just sparks something, even if it just goes, oh, yeah, my brain's not fully caffeinated. That makes perfect sense. Thank you very much, robotic overlord. You know, however you want to do that. But it is all about the prompts. And you do get better. If I heard about an uh, offline version where you can adjust the data sets if it uses, would be more limited, but in theory, you're more aware of what's under the hood. Uh, ChatGPT does have a section called Playground um, where you can adjust what's called the heat. And the heat is essentially like, it's based on statistics and how often certain words are used. And because remember, it's pulling, it's AI, right? So it's pulling words. So statistically, if like cat and mouse is used more often than cat and tiger, you're, you're more than likely to get more like a cat and mouse response. But if you adjust the heat, I think you have to be online though. I mean, like I said, I don't, I've played around with a lot of these things you know, and, and adjusted some of the heat and responses and, and those types of things. I'm actually going to show you, and in that document, there's a prompt engineering link for free, sort of some training on prompting prompt engineers, and it's like open access, and they're constantly adding new things to it. I think, you know, if, you, if we treat the prompts like you're speaking to an assistant, that helps, and you can definitely, definitely, uh, impersonation, that's an excellent one. Yeah, the best way to get the right style of writing. Yep, absolutely. There and there's a bunch of prompts. In fact, I've got a, I've got a bunch of them too that I have like on a post-it note over here too, um, that I can paste in here in just a minute. But you can see what's created and then ask for more detail. I think when I first started out, I was a little like wah, wah, underwhelmed, and then I started to get better at the prompting. You know. Uh, has anyone used ChatGPT for performance evals? Brian is asking. Please chat in if you have. <laughs> for ourselves or for the rest of our team. But I think, you know, for me, what people ask me for a lot in my classes is, do you have a template for a stakeholder register? Do you have a template for risk register? Do you have, you know, a template for a communications management plan? Well, you can use this 
for that. I mean, definitely use it for that. Yep. You heard that Bing Chat utilizes ChatGPT4 by default, and that if you're not actually paying for it. I haven't looked into it. I'm sure there are hacks for everything. Absolutely. It's about asking the right thing and not losing your voice in the process, Brad's saying. Yep. You wrote your coworker evaluations. Exactly. I mean, you know, so when we talk about, I'm going to pop this open here um, for a second, but I think, you know, the thing thing about the actual actual prompting and how it works, you really, really, you get better better at it as as you go. go. And, and it, it, it's, it's just, just you start, start and plus, plus here's the other thing. It, it starts, starts to learn your, your voice, voice. Like, like how, how you speak, how you write, write and, those and those kinds of things. things. So, so is there, is there an echo? 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 There's an echo? Let me know if there's an echo. Yeah, maybe something's weird on that spot. Gone? Okay, perfect. Good, good. All right, cool. So sorry about that. Okay, so when we look at OpenAI, if you go out to OpenAI.com, if you've already been out to ChatGPT, I just got rid of it, AI got rid of it, (laughs) OpenAI.com, this is the main site. So if you've already used it, chances are you've been here. But what I wanted to do is just show those of you that haven't. I sounded cool, like a robot. (laughs) Thank you. Um, But when you go out to OpenAI, and you're going to absolutely want to scroll down. You can click on learn about, you know, view research, that kind of thing. But you're definitely going to want to come out, come down here where it says try chat GPT. Now, immediately, you will absolutely have to create a username and password. You'll have to be able to log in. Yep. Uh, I hear you can upload documents to Google or even get chat GPT specific links. You can. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. You can pop links in there. You can pop articles in there. You can pop YouTube videos in there and say, hey, summarize this. It, it's, it's really uh, amazing. So you'll try ChatGPT. I already have an account, but once you do that, it's going to ask you for a username and password. If you decide that you want to you know, pay or get four and all of that, you can certainly do that. But once you get in, this will be blank the first time you use it. It'll be absolutely blank, but I wanted to, just in case, because, you know, sometimes 3.5, it gets bogged down because so many people are using it. And so I wanted to make sure I had some (laughs) pre-baked items in here. But um, basically, I'm going to say, good morning. Please say hello to all my webinar attendees who are here to learn more about you and how to use ChatGPT in project management. And so in about two seconds, it's it's going to generate... Hello and good morning to the webinar attendees. You know, so that's just something silly and generic, but I figured let's start with that. Any chat that you put in here to regenerate any new message in each one is going to create a history on the left-hand side. If you decide, you know what, I don't want to keep that particular history or it's bogging down, if you hover over the actual chats, you can see either an edit situation or a trash can. So if I wanted to delete this from my history, I'm gonna click on the trash can and then click the check mark. It's almost like an, are you sure? Are you sure? So when we look at, you know, chat GPT and how we enter in the prompts, one thing, and this is um, a link in your documentation where it's called learnprompting.org. Learnprompting.org. This is going to be a guide to communicating with artificial intelligence. And so if you scroll down, you can see beginner, intermediate, advanced applications, those types of things. And especially if you're a brand newbie, and plus there are tons of, of videos out there, but you've got all sorts of good information in here. And I've, I've been through this, the different curriculums, how to add to the site, those types of things. Yes. Um, no, no. If you delete it, it deletes your queries, but it doesn't delete it from like the cloud you would have to put that new chat back in there. So when we look at, you know, how to, I guess, and let me scroll down here and find chat GPT for project management. Let me scroll all the way back up. You can have a string of conversations in the same chat if you want to maintain the history. And you can see how much I was playing around with this. But let me go all the way back to the top. Please document the risks of using ChatGPT on project management projects and then create a risk register with solutions that can be copied and pasted into Excel. 
So if you look at, as an AI language mar uh, model, ChatGPT has certain limitations and potential risks. Now, it could very well be, if you're trying to drop in, it's a four thing. It's a ChatGPT 4, not a 3.5. 3.5 is going to be pretty generic. So it's going to get in, yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. Absolutely, ask questions. But when you look at, you know, the capabilities just go up and up and up. Once you get into four, and of course, they'll do a 4.5 and then a five and those types of things. But I think just generic, basic information, asking a prompt, and I, I'm talking to it like I would, hey, assistant, you know, could you please do this for me? Uh, it was able to give you information about a YouTube channel. Yeah, and it should, but sometimes it does get bogged down because other people are using it or it's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not an actual human but when we look at the different risks and so on, and I'm just going to like scroll down, I'm not going to read everything to you, but essentially it listed the risks that we talked about in the beginning. And then I asked it to create something that I could copy and paste into Excel. So how many of you use Excel for project management, for daily interactions with your team? Or how many of you are using Excel spreadsheets? Yeah, absolutely. Me too, because Microsoft Project fights back. So I'm like, no, <laughs> no project. I don't think so. Um, I'm unable to directly access or view specific YouTube videos. Yeah, I mean, there is a way to do it. I can't do it on 3.5 or I'd show you. But if you want, I've watched a ton of YouTube videos out there about ChatGPT to teach you how to do that in ChatGPT. But when you look at this risk register, you know, obviously it's pretty generic, it's pretty basic, but lack of human uh, intuition so heavily Excel usage for task management. Absolutely. So if I can create something or ChatGPT can create something based on a prompt and then I can copy and paste that into Excel, as long as I'm doing my own due diligence. Cloud offerings like MS Planner, they're going to be um, different aspects or plugins that they're building so that it can relate or interrelate with some of these other software programs like Planner. Um, I think there's one out there now. I think my boss was telling me that it, it can like have this plugin to order your groceries on Instacart. There are all these plugins. You do have to get on a waiting list, but I know that they're building them out. There's going to be interrelationships with all sorts of apps that are out there, especially cloud-based apps. And so I would love it. I can't wait till it joins with Planner. I love Planner. So as I kind of scroll down here, you know, we take a look at the solutions. And of course, I always thank them because, you know, uh, you're welcome. And below that, I put create a common project management agenda for a status review of cost, scope, and schedule. And so it's going to kind of follow the same vein. You can stack chat after chat after chat in the same original. But one of the things that I've found is that if it's not really giving me the information or it's not expanding on the information the way that I need it to, it's because whatever came first, it's kind of pulling from. It's saying, oh, well, this is what you asked before, and oh, this is what your prompt was before, and oh, generic was okay, so I'm going to keep being generic. So sometimes it's a matter of working through the prompts and trying to figure out, all right, what's the best prompt, and then starting a new chat. Because that way, you, you might get one answer on one chat and then put the same you know, in-depth prompt in a brand new chat. It's kind of like a clean version of it. And when you do that, you're going to get a better answer. And when I first started using this, I didn't know that. So I'm like, okay, I'm talking about communications and I'm just going to keep using this same chat. And I was like, meh, like, I was a little underwhelmed by it. And then I thought, okay, well, let me just try a new one, right? Trying a new one put my last prompt that I was underwhelmed with the response and got a completely different response. So it's kind of like if you have a personal assistant and they're not fully caffeinated, the answer one way. And then when they're fully caffeinated, they answer a different way. It's kind of the same thing, but we want to make sure that as we're entering the prompts, we're doing it in such a way that it understands what we're asking for. So I did another one and this is, you know, kind of cool. I think explain to me like I'm a five-year-old quantum computing. So I was, okay, kiddo, you know, so it's treating me like I'm a five-year-old. And then further down, I said, explain to me like I'm a 25-year-old. It's going to be different, right? And uh, for sure, it's, it's just one of these things where if I don't understand something, 
I don't need to go out and necessarily search a YouTube video. I, I can say, hey, explain this to me. Explain it. Different writing prompts. I asked it, uh, what are the best prompts to use? And it depends, obviously, on what type of writing. But a narrative, write a story about a character who must confront their biggest fear. So here, here's something cool. I do a podcast and I'm like, you know, I've got writer's block. I've got all these things. I don't know what to write about. Hey, chat GPT, here's what I'm thinking. Can you write me a narrative from the character's perspective? Add some conflict, add some dialogue. And all of a sudden I got a brand new story, right? So it's, it's cool that way, especially if you've got little kids like happy pre-Mother's Day to all the moms and dads and families out there, you know, for this weekend. But let's say your kid is making you read the same exact story over and over and over again every single night. You're like, hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you give me an idea for a story that you'd like to hear and let's throw it in here. I mean, yeah, it's pro we're talking about project management. But at the same time, you know, persuasive, argue for or against the use of social media in schools. Okay, and Chris is saying it's great for things like explain the different types of RAM commonly used in 2023. Friend of mine is a computer teacher and it generates lessons pl lesson plans. Right. How much time is that saving? Tons. Reflect on a time when you made a mistake and what you learned from it. You know, these are just some basic prompts. Now, here's another one. I said, here's a potential project description for your PMP application based on the information you provided. I didn't provide a ton of information. I didn't. Yeah, it's only trained on data to 2021, but if that data hasn't changed between 21 and 23, like in a training or like in a, you know, education setting and nothing's changed with it, like the history of 1776, then you're, you're fine using it. Yeah. But after that, you know, anything that we're looking at that was created between 21 and 23 or where we currently are today, that's brand new. They might not know who the new you know, CEO of Twitter is. But history, information. How does the idea of conversations being guided by the initial prompt interplay with fact of token droppings as the history gets longer? It, de it degrades the history as it gets longer. It degrades the conversation because it's in essence looking at sort of that very first prompt. You're almost better off starting new chats unless you're asking it to expand on something that it already created. And even then, the further you get into the chats, the more I started to recognize that it's sort of just repeating itself. It's not really getting any better. So I would try different prompts and so on. And, it, it, you know, maybe it was human error, but I feel like the more you add to it, you know, then just that, <laughs> I don't, me either. I don't belong in long chats either in principle. But yeah, are there ways to avoid token dropping? Uh, that would be a question that you would have to ask the creators of this. I mean, I would think that the best way to avoid that, if I'm being honest, is to have the, the four rather than, you know, the 3.5. But if you don't want to pay for it, uh, that's the kind of thing, you know, completely up to you. But I would definitely say the more you get into like longer and longer and longer conversations in one chat, the worse the prompts are going to do. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just one of those things where the longer you actually have a conversation. So for example, let me go up here. I asked it to create a detailed uh, communications management plan that I can use as a template for all the projects that I work on. So when we look at, you know, sure, I'd be happy to help you do that. The purpose of this comm plan, and it goes on, purpose, objectives, which, you know, it's okay. It's not bad. It's just not as detailed as maybe I wanted it to be. And then I'm like, mm, can you please explain, expand on this and make it more detailed? So then it goes through and says, certainly here's a more detailed version. But to me, it doesn't look more detailed. You know what I mean? It, it looks more like, well, okay, they added a couple things in here. But had I asked it, you know, based on what I'm really looking for, could you create it? So it's more in depth, but had I kept going and going and going, I'm going to get a lot of repetition. If I start a brand new chat, I'm going to get, you know, maybe some re repetition because it's a comm plan after all. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, as the chat goes on, it starts feeling like a phone call. Exactly. You hang up. No, you hang up. It's so true. Where do you want to go to dinner? I don't care. Where do you want to go to dinner? So that's kind of that. We want to make sure that we're starting new chats or at least deleting, you know, the ones that aren't working for us. But this one is definitely, it's definitely more in depth. Now, one thing we're talking about dropping, talking about dropping, it sort of stopped and glitched right there. And anytime you see, because when you enter a chat, and I'll, I'll show you here in just a moment, but you can see that little arrow there. That little arrow basically says, I'm ready, I'm ready for a new prompt. If you see three little dots, like you see in a text message, then it's, it's still thinking. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit. But if it just stops, just ask it to continue and it'll pick up right where it was. So you're talking about the thumbs up and thumbs down. I just used one of these the other day because I was asking it a question about you know, the a PMP exam and that kind of thing. And I, I know the PMBOK Guide 6 was the up-to-date one in 2021. Well, that's different now, right? So I wanted to give it feedback that, hey, that's no longer, you know, PMI exam worthy. So if you click the thumbs up or the thumbs down, let's say I, I like this or I don't like this, you're basically giving ChatGPT feedback. Yeah, so you're saying that's harmful or unsafe that isn't true or this isn't helpful and you can key it in because you know they're, they're going to take that data and then add it. So it could be for the developer's benefit, but in general, it's learning. And so because it's learning, we want to give it the right feedback. So I'm not going to do that because it's actually not bad feedback. If you've got the thumbs up or thumbs down, um, you can use that. If you click on that, you can say, yeah, that, that worked for me. Like I'm going to keep that. And when we look at one of two, it's cycling through, hey, okay, I'm going to clip those together and see which one I like better. Is it approval and distribution or is it approval and change control? Which one am I going to use? Um, I had an interesting situation the other day when I was having ChatGPT write some uh, assignable plane books. Is that what that says for me? And it would cut off in the middle. When I asked it to continue, it just started over. Meh. Well, again, we are dealing with machines here right? Usually when I say continue, it'll pick right back up again. But you know, that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. And if that were the case, I'd be like, thumbs down, man. That didn't work for me. It was, you know, it, it wasn't functioning for me. And at that point, I would just start a new chat or refresh because sometimes it does get bogged down. But if you're looking up here at my chats, they're very simple for very simple things. They get more in depth for more in depth things. And I think it's just like thinking about how you talk to a person. So please create a seven day meal plan to help keep my energy up. This project is trying my last nerve. So, okay, here you go, your seven day meal plan. And it's gonna go through and you can say, eh, you know, I, I'm allergic to bananas. You know, remove bananas or make it vegetarian or, you know, can you make it more interesting or can you make me a shopping list? Yeah. Um, is there any way to change? Yeah, I think once you click on it, it's not going to give you the opportunity. It's basically looking at it like, hey, uh, you know, you already clicked the down button. So let me go back up here. If I click thumbs down and I don't give it a response or submit feedback, it's going to get rid of the thumbs up. It's like, oh, well, you, you know, you already clicked the thumbs down. It's going to say, all right, I'm going to generate something else. So if you look at here, here's a seven day meal plan. It's different. Right. So if you do that thumbs down on the one, it's going to say you're you already clicked that. I can't change that to a thumbs up. I've, I've already adapted it for you. At that point, you would have to go and create a new message. Yeah. So it's just a matter of really playing around with it. I mean, it's not like you're going to hurt its feelings <laughs> unless you come right out and chat in a prompt that's inappropriate uh, at that point. OK, but it's not going to be something that absolutely, you know, it's going to hurt. Its feelings. It's trying to learn and it's our human nature that absolutely is necessary to look at some of these things. So for example, how many of you do procurement? Anybody work with uh, contracts or anything like that? Where you have to kind of craft a time and materials contract or you have, yes, thank you, Dan. Um, or you have, you know, um, I'm a landlord. I'm renting out my, my house that I love. I wanna make sure, so you do, Lance, yeah. 
But so if you were to scroll down this, notice it says this is a sample contract and should not be considered as legal advice. We should believe it. Yeah. You've used it to create a vendor selection matrix with weighted criteria. That's awesome. Yeah. And you work closely with your, absolutely. I think even if we're creating this ourselves, we would have to work with our procurement department. You know, even chat GPT is like, yo, make sure you check with your, you know, but it does give you kind of that basic overview where you say, all right, well, you know, let's go through this with my procurement department and see, is this enough or are there other terms and conditions that are necessary? I didn't get into the weeds with the prompt. I just said time and material contract for a software developer for a term no longer than 12 months. You know, so it's just, it's one of those situations where it just depends. Now for my agile folks, write a three sentence user story for someone who needs spell check because they aren't the greatest speller in the entire world. Some of these are tongue in cheek just to show you. You can be casual with it. You can sort of ask it for certain things, but this to me, and I don't know if you deal with user stories, but this to me, it looks a bit more like an epic, right? It looks too big. There's too much information. Now, do we understand it? Yeah. But, you know, maybe it needs to be, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, suggesting autocorrect alternatives might be its own feature. Highlight grammatical errors might be its own feature. So it's not the end all be all. It doesn't take over for humans. But at the same time, it can generate conversations. There was another one that I did. Let me kind of go down. Virtual team building. How many of you are virtual or have virtual teams? <laughs> no cheating, Marshall. Although I've never met a crossword puzzle that I've been able to complete. But how many of you have virtual team members where you have to do some sort of team building or something like that? Please give me a list of 10 team building ideas for virtual team members. So it did, you know, scavenger hunt, create list of blah, blah, you know, trivia night. Sometimes these things can help us just go, oh, okay, a virtual escape room. And then the last one was karaoke. And those of you who know me and have heard my karaoke story, you know, not a fan. What if karaoke isn't the best idea since my entire team can't sing? <laughs> So the rest of my team can, I just cannot. That's a valid concern if you feel like karaoke might not be the best option. And so then it gives you even more. And I think for me, that's uh, definitively the brainstorming aspect. This is going to give me a VLOOKUP formula. I don't know, how many of you use VLOOKUP? That's a valid concern. Oh, it totally is, Mike. It's a valid concern of mine. I like this idea of virtual ideas. Oh, and then I said, okay, now, based on that, please craft a super casual invitation to my virtual team to vote on team building ideas to help with collaboration. So it said, you know, hey team, we're all working hard, doing a great job, created a poll. Although <laughs> those of you that know me, I don't use cheers. I'm not cool enough to use cheers to sign my emails. Anybody that is cool enough, I think you're super cool. I just can't use cheers. So for me, I would copy and paste that and then I would put, yeah, you know, it's a valid concern of mine to uh, use cheers at the end of my emails. So I would change that. But you can always say, don't use cheers. It's true if everybody knows your name. Oh, yes, yeah, no. <laughs> I can be virtually cool. I can be. Is ChatGPT aware of mid-journey? Sure, I'm sure it is. Hold on, let me get off screen here. Let me start a new chat. And I can't talk and type at the same time, but are you aware of mid-journey? Vast amounts of information. <laughs> All right. Could you create a prompt of a basket of flowers for, whoops, for mid-journey? in automatic ratio 2.3. Let's see. There you go. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> now, well, I've used mid-journey quite a bit, <clears throat> excuse me, and the better the prompts are in mid-journey, obviously the better your results are gonna be. And so, you know, you found a guide to train ChatGPT to create mid-journey prompts, that's awesome. 
Can you touch on your Kanban board prompt? You got it. Now, here's the thing, and I wasn't altogether, I sort of did that today. The Kanban board prompt, it gave me, and I wasn't as happy with it, and I should have taken it deeper, but I had so many prompts I was playing around with, but could you please create a Kanban board for a simple surprise party for my 25-year-old? So it's just, it gave me a very simple to do, doing, and done, but if you practice Kanban, you know that you don't get to done until you like pull it in, right? And so it wasn't as much as I thought it was going to be, but it definitely said, feel free to modify any tasks to fit your specific needs. You can use a physical whiteboard or an online tool such as Trello or Asana to create and manage your Kanban board. Good luck with your surprise party. So even just that, I mean, I'm feeling like all warm and fuzz. Well, thanks, chat GPT. I appreciate that. But I would dig into it a lot more. Uh, can you paste that prompt in the chat? You can, Chris. In mid-journey, I think that's what you're asking. You'd have to use the uh, backslash imagine prompt first and then paste that in there to, for mid-journey. And for those of you who don't know what mid-journey is, you know, when you put in a prompt like the basket of flowers and all of that, ultimately what it's going to do is going to give you four different options that you can either upscale or reversion and the same thing with that. Can I do that for you? Pull up Mid Journey? Oh, I can't. I can't on my demo machine. I can't pull up Mid Journey. I can't. And we don't have enough time to do it. But maybe I'll do that in another webinar for sure. But let me go back because what I'll probably do after this wraps up, I'm going to be like, hey, because I've used it a bunch of times. Here's the prompt. Um, yeah, I can't log into it on, on this particular computer. But creating an uh, illustration of a small woven basket. Now, the one thing about this is the length to width ratio of two, do, uh, two colon three. One thing, uh, I can't, hold on. I can, let me pull it up here. I'll tell you what, do me a favor. And will you put in my email address, Colin? Will you put in my email address? Because what I can do, thanks, Ryan. Look at you go. <laughs> awesome, you have mid-journey? Let me know how it works. You're welcome. Thank you, Ryan. Way to be on it. People to text capture from macros. Oh, you know, this is the, like, that that one scene in uh, iRobot where Will Smith's like, well, can you write a symphony like a human? And the robot said, no, can you? <laughs> and I just, that sticks out in my mind as to how much this is all coming about. I configured chat GPT to act like an image generator for a blind friend where we gave it a prompt and it describes different images. I love that. That's awesome. That's so cool. I think there's no end really to the creativity that we can utilize with this, whether it's for project management, if you're not allowed to use it at work, absolutely. Try it at home and take it as far as you can. I think there's so much, and as I mentioned in the very beginning, I'm not the I'm trying to be the smartest person in the room. I'm still learning. We're all still learning. And I've actually learned quite a bit from all of you. And I, and I appreciate that because now I have to go play around with mid-journey after this. Dolly also works from OpenAI for Wells for Images. You're absolutely right. <laughs> what are the three laws of robotics, Sean? Come on exciting prompts that's awesome it is pretty exciting and you know the thing about this is writing prompts for itself please write the top 10 prompts for authors one of the other silly things that i did before we wrap up is ask it to write an email like shakespeare would write it or write an email you know in a certain like jane austen would write it and just some of those things are just fun to play around with but you know, when we look at writing prompts, the AI chat box, time and material contracts, if I, I asked it about Microsoft Project and why, you know, fast tracking, why does Emma's project keep pushing out my end day? Because that's how it do. What relationship can I use to fast track my schedule? Oh, Adobe Firefly, that's awesome. For sure. Yeah, post, thank you, Colin. That's my email. So I can get to my email on this computer that I'm using to demo. So feel free to shoot me an email and ask me any questions. I can copy some of these in. But I think it's also fun to do it yourself, you know, to kind of get in there. 
Here's another email to the sponsor. I'm writing to provide an update on the virtual reality video game development that we've been working on. There's some just some things that we can utilize this for to help us. Uh, spell check assistance, time and materials, quantum computing, writing prompts, the comm plan, AI is it, uh, unaware of mid-journey. Yeah, for sure. In the iRobot series, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Oh, those are your three? Yes, those are the three. I love it. A robot must obey the orders given by human beings, except when... I'm not going to read this out loud. You're going to get me in trouble, Sean. ChatGPT is going to fight back. Did you see the Google I.O. a couple days ago? Their ChatGPT is going to be integrated with Firefly. Dude, seriously? All of this is, is coming. I mean, all of this is just going to absolutely explode in a gazillion different directions. Google's going to get on it. You know, we're going to have, we have already have ChatGPT. We're going to have Bing and, you know, all of these things. Every single company that is a technology company, which is a lot of companies, is going to be creating their own versions of this. You know, and I think for me, I've always been, like, I, I have a technology problem uh, I was in a virtual reality a while back before a lot of people were and that kind of thing. And I just, I really enjoy it. That doesn't mean I don't have a healthy fear of where this could go or how things could change, you know. But at the same time, the more educated we are as it educates itself and other people educate it, uh, the more educated that we are, the better able we are to utilize it to our best advantage and it, the collective AI, to our best advantages Use it for our businesses, for our personal lives, create a side hustle, whatever it is that you want to use it for, project management. I think if we can improve our cycle time by getting rid of some of the mind-numbing tasks that we do every single day, especially in project management, the more we're going to be focusing on our team, doing the work, focusing on continuous improvements, focusing on better quality, why is this defect happening? It keeps happening and happening, that kind of thing. So, yeah, um, I've seen some of those, Nate. Thank you so much about AI safety and more realistic rule sets, for sure. Absolutely. And there are tons of them. Tons and tons of videos out there. Highly encourage you to go out, check it out. If anything that we talked about today, I mean, I only had an hour, so it's not that much time, but if everything that we've talked about today, if it sparks some interest or it just kept the interest going or you're like, woo, I want to go sign up right now or what's this mid-journey thing? Because mid-journey, you have to join a Discord server, so I don't know how you feel about that. You can do that, which I did, um, and then you know utilize that. Just be aware that anybody can see the things that you generate unless you create your own server. That doesn't mean they can't see it. It just means that you know you can focus on what you're doing. But there's so many cool things out there. Hopefully, you generated some information. You just copy and pasted an email from a coworker and asked it to rewrite like Shakespeare would. Now, it doesn't sound so angry. To be or not to be a good email. That is the question. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> to make it sound angrier, for sure. Well, listen, I am totally cognizant of your cycle time. And I know that y'all probably are at work or gearing up to go out of work and enjoy your weekend. But thank you so much for joining me. This was so much fun. And I appreciate all the, ta uh, all the chats and all that because I learn too. And if you're a lifelong learner, like I am getting in for me, like I'm going back through the chat. So I'm going to read every single one just to make sure I've, I've taken all my notes on that as well. But thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Everybody here at Storm Studios appreciate you being here. Hopefully I'll see you in a project management class, a PMP, an agile certified practitioner, something sometime soon. Otherwise, I hope you got some value out of this. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And thank you all so very much. Now go out there and chat GPT. Thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your day and a fantastic weekend. Bye.